Perfect. So we're delighted tonight to be joined by Ruth. Ruth is a member of the Restarters community and an avid Linux user. Ruth has a, a long background in the tech industry uh, and more, most relevant for tonight, uh, used to work at the University College London, which was the first university in the UK to use Unix and was part, helped set up the Unix user group uh, back in the 80s. So uh, Ruth's experience with Linux dates all the way back to kind of when it was first being uh, created, basically. So it's really exciting to have her with us tonight. Uh, and without further ado, really, I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Ruth. Um, the floor okay. is yours. Cool. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, I, uh, I think I'm going to straight away share my screen because um, there we go. And then I say share. OK, so I hope that's worked. So I hope everybody can now see uh, rather than the big picture of me, they can they can see my screen with and in the middle of which is um, a welcome window that says welcome to Linux Mint. Um, so if you can't see that, then uh, let Neil know straight away and uh, he'll try and sort out any technical problems. Um, so um, I'm going to give you a wee bit of background um, about Linux, Linux. Um, you'll see why I tend to call it Linux, but I know a lot of people call it Linux, so I hope it doesn't annoy you horribly if I uh, use a different pronunciation. Um, and then uh, and then we'll... Uh, uh, I've got a presentation for that, and then we'll put the presentation away and do some things on, on my machine. Um, I've got a laptop that I'm using here, and that is running Mint uh, Linux, as, as, as it shows, which uh, is one that we recommend. So let me um, get up. Uh, this is a familiar application, a file manager. And um, I'm going to go into the folder that I've prepared for this evening. And um, there's my workshop. So if I double click on that, it brings up uh, an application um, called LibreOffice. Um, it should do, here it comes, Impress. And um, I suppose before we go um, any further, I'm just going to get rid of my phone. So it's got three things. Um, so one thing to say about about Linux Linux is that it is um, it's free open source software, um, and I'll I'll say a bit about what that means. Let's get it going from the first slide, um, and so um, it runs uh, a lot of applications that are themselves uh, freely available. They're free open source. They're not proprietary. And so a lot of this evening, I think we'll be saying, look, this, this is the Linux version of something that you're probably familiar with in another operating system in Windows or, or Mac or so whatever. So um, can, can I uh, uh, ask you, James, can you see images of people as well? Do I need to get rid of that? Actually, I can't watch. No, we can just see your slide. That's you can good. just see the slide. Thank you very much for that. Good. So um, this is our workshop. So let's go on to the next one. So the first big question, I suppose, is, is why on earth are we all here tonight? Why, why use, why use uh, Linux at all? Um, what's wrong with uh, the ubiquitous Windows that everybody knows and loves and knows how to use and so on? So, well, the first thing is it is free. Um, and, and the other bit of, of it is that it's open source software. And that means that um, there's no copyright on the material, but, but what it means in practice is that there is a whole community of, of volunteers, of, of software engineers, who work collaboratively to develop the software, to fix bugs in the software, and, and generally to maintain it and to answer questions about it and so on. Um, and this is actually, uh, you know, that there are papers and books written about this, but it's a, a very effective way of developing software. It gives you something that um, is very stable, very reliable, and very flexible. If, if you come across a bug in, in Linux or an open source 
uh, application, you can pretty much get in touch with the developers and tell them what the problem is, and they will fix it in a release that will come out within you know a couple of months. If you find a bug in in something like Windows, it would take years before, and you, you'd never know whether it was really fixed. Similarly, if if there is functionality that you want to add to a, an open source. Um, piece of software, you're more likely to get that done if, it, if it's a, a useful addition. So I'm a, a huge fan of, of um, open source software and I've worked on, on some systems myself as well. It's a, it's a, it's a really good way to work. Um, and the other thing which I think is probably really important for the restart community, the repair community, and that is that it runs really well on old hardware. If you've got an old laptop or an old desktop that's no longer, um, Windows is no longer able to update on it, you know, famously, you have to go out and buy a new laptop every few years in order to keep up with the software. Linux is completely the opposite to that. It tries very much to run on, on old hardware, and it's also much more resilient to hardware problems. It doesn't crash in the middle of something if something small goes wrong. So it, it really enables us to reuse our old laptops, keep them going for much longer. Um, it, it's th there's lots of different versions of Linux, which is both a, an advantage and, and a disadvantage, I suspect. But certainly, um, Linux Mint is uh, is lightweight, it uses less disk space and less power, and so again, it gives it that flexibility. Um, and another advantage of, uh, of of it being open source, in fact, is that um, arguably it's the most secure operating system because of its very design. There are um, ways in which the operating system itself is designed that's separate. For, for as an example, it has a, a big separation between ordinary users who just want to um, or use the system for, for whatever it is, software development or, or doing their emails, and uh, so-called super users or, or people with high privileges who can go on and, and really manage the system. So it makes it much more difficult for uh, rogue um, software to be able to be installed on the system to take hold of the system and, and run it because it wouldn't have those root privileges. So the very design makes it more secure. Um, and despite it being lightweight and, and seems very simple, it is a totally fully fledged multi-user, um, multitasking operating system. Um, and it's, it's used a lot of servers actually run uh, Linux or Linux or even Unix as their operating system. Um, apparently supercomputers, uh, those really big powerful things that um, quantum uh, computers are going to take over from one day, but so far supercomputers are running Linux um, and one can do everything on it. As I said, um, I'm a software development developer and I've been using it for that for a long time, but you can do graphics, you can do sound, I've edited videos, anything you want to do is possible. Um, as I said, there are different versions. The one we're running today is, is Cinnamon Mint. Um, and I, I, maybe at the end, if people have got experience of other versions of Linux, then it'd be interesting to see what those differences are. Um, and the, 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 that's one thing which is like, it, it's good and bad, you know, it makes it confusing in a way. But the other thing about Linux, I think in its applications, it's infinitely configurable. Well, maybe not infinitely, but it feels that way. And so it, it's much more difficult to compare um, what you're doing with other people sometimes, but it's, I think it's a bonus, it's lovely. So, um, and the other thing is, uh, again, I think because it's open source, um, there's a much greater willingness to help uh, the whole community out there is there to help people with problems. And if anything doesn't work, or you want to find a new application, or you've got queries, or just want to chat to other, other users, then um, putting searches out on, on the internet will, will get you lots of links with forums and help and so on. So um, a tiny bit of history, which we've kind of uh, hinted at maybe. So there were two um, heroes in, in, the, in, in uh, computer history, Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson, who um, in the 60s and 70s, I think were working at AT&T in the States. And um, they were a bit fed up with the offering of, of the, the operating system that was um, available to them. So they actually sat down and designed um, uh, an operating system which they called Unix um, and at the same time the C language was developed. Um, so uh, 
uh, at and released the source code and the operating system to the university community. And that's how um, we ended up in London, um, uh, running it up at UCL and um, one or two other uh, UK universities. But um, there was, a, I think there was a big court case, but in the end, at and refused to release it to the commercial world. They wanted to charge for it. So, and, and there are some commercial um, versions of it that were bought from uh, at and So uh, engineer in um, uh, Finland, Linus Torvalds, said, uh, well, I won't say what he said. <laughs> um, he sat down and he really wanted to have a Unix-like operating system. And he reverse engineered a new operating system, which he called Linux, you can see the pun there. And um, by reverse engineering, he looked at the way Unix worked um, and he had access to the source code, to the programs within Unix. Um, and what he did was write completely new code to work in exactly the same way as Unix did. So that there wasn't a single line, original line of code in Linux that at and uh, that, that, sorry, there wasn't an original line of code in Linux that had come from Unix. So at and couldn't sue him for copyright or anything. So a huge amount of work, although the operating system was much smaller then and simpler. Um, and to, to prove that, you know, if, if you're interested, you can actually go to uh, the link there um, and see the current version of, of Linux, the source code that, that he is still maintaining. And as I said, there are lots of different distros based on this. I, I actually run Sue's open Sue's on my desktop um, and, and this is Linux Mint. So um, I'm, I'm just going to say it's easy to install it um, if you want to. Um, there's a very good wiki that um, uh, a, a, a restarter colleague, Philip Lerich, has written. And uh, um, I, th I think you, we'll, we'll put the links up to um, that are in these slides for, for you to access. But have a look at that. And he talks about different distros. Choose your distro, download it onto a USB stick, put the USB stick in your laptop or desktop and boot from there and follow the instructions. And hey, presto, you will be able to run Linux pretty easily. Uh, the important thing to know, which is really useful, is that you can dual boot. So um, you can actually choose to have both your old operating system and the new Linux on your device. So that means if you don't like it, or you know, there, there might well be occasions when a, a piece of proprietary software only runs on Windows or, or Mac OS, then you can um, boot that up and, and you still have access to it. Um, one thing it, it will do as well, it will keep, and I think it doesn't matter if you dual boot or, or, or um, just have Linux on, but it will keep your old Windows files on on what um, on a virtual disk so that you have access to those as well once you're running um, your new operating system, which is really useful. Um, anyway, we're not going to do it today, it would take too long, but um, I'm sure we can run workshops on that we have done in the past. So um, enough of the talking, I'm now going to get rid of um, my presentation and start playing with it. I'll just get rid of that altogether. Okay, cool. And now I'm going to get rid of that from my screen. Lovely. Get rid of that. Now what you can see here is pretty much what it looks like when you very first boot up and log in to um, to your Linux system. The, the background image will be different because I changed it and I couldn't get back to the old one, but otherwise you'll get this welcome message and you'll get a couple of, of applications on the desktop and you'll see a number of um, icons along the bottom of the screen here, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, so, uh, sorry, I've got to... Remember what I wanted to talk about. Good. Um, so, uh, as, as a newbie, you can go through the welcome uh, tutorial, or you can uh, hide it away and come back to it another time. You don't need to go through it in order to run to run Linux. So, um, I, I think I think it, there are similarities to Windows, but I'm going to stop saying this because I, I don't know, and I don't want to, and it gets boring to keep saying the same thing anyway. But I think you will find that a lot of the applications look quite familiar. Um, 
So there's there's a lot of um, applications that have a graphical interface, graphical user interface that use a window to, uh, uh, and uh, mouse and so on for you to use them. And um, a lot of the functionality is also available through a command line. Um, I'm just starting it up here. Um, it's a console or, or um, a terminal, whatever you like to call it. And there you can just type commands at uh, Linux and uh, it will respond. Um, hopefully we'll have time to look at this a bit more later. Um, but, the, but this is probably, although this system does exist on, on Windows, it's, it's, it is very powerful and a lot of people do like it. Uh, on, on, uh, for some people, it's one of the reasons that they run Linux. So, um, yeah, and as we've said today, we haven't got a huge amount of time. There's an awful lot we could say about Linux, but um, this is really going to be a quick tour. Um, so I'm just going to um, show you um, the main menu, which I think, again, is similar. If you come down to the bottom left hand side of the screen, you'll see um, some kind of icon there. For Linux Mint, it, it's their icon. It'll be slightly different if you've got a different version. If you left click on that, it will bring up a list of um, all of the applications that are available to you. And there's also a search bar at the top. So if you can't see something, you can search for it. Um, maybe Firefox. Uh, there it comes up. So that's very simple. Um, just get rid of the search. There's um, things uh, that the, the top one is all applications, but there are categories here to um, make it easier to find things. Um, on the panel on the left hand side here, these are just you can put anything on here, and these are frequently used um, programs. But uh, more usefully, probably, is that you can put your frequently used programs either on the desktop or along the bar at the bottom of the screen. So let's uh, indeed go into the internet um, applications and get the Firefox web browser, because that's something that um, other, other web browsers are available, but Firefox is very popular and it does run on other, other operating systems. So if I right click, if I click the right hand button on my mouse, it brings up a few options, one of which is add to desktop. So if I left click there, there it is appearing on my desktop and now I can run it from there. Let's just pop back into that menu again right click on Firefox web browser. The other thing I can do if I click add to panel, then um, that puts it at the bottom here. It was already there, so you don't see anything different. And finally, uh, right click on that. And, um, and now uh, you'll see that I already have it in my favorites on, on the left-hand side here. So the, um, oops. So the option is to remove it from there. If it wasn't there already, then the option would be to add it there. And finally, um, this is the software manager. So you have the option to uninstall an application. Obviously, I'm not going to do that now. So um, this is your main access to applications. Um, they, um, <clears throat> but there are other ways to get to applications, obviously, as well. Um, now, this is the, uh, the file manager. I'm just going to start that up again. We had it earlier. Um, and it, again, I, 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 I feel it's fairly intuitively, um, fairly intuitive to use. There are different file managers. This is one called Nemo, which is quite popular. Um, and uh, let me just give you a, a quick tour of it. Um, so the, uh, the icons up here on, on the right hand side will give you a different format. You can have just a simple list. Um, the, the, these green things, these are all folders or in, in old Unix speak, they're called directories. So um, sometimes it, it's just useful to remember that that, that term does get used. Um, if I click on, on the icon view, then you, 
it's an icon view as, as indicated and um, files will will they'll try and have a bit of an icon depending on on the, what kind of files they are so if as an example i go into my demo files double left click there um, you'll see i've actually got um a, a windows format uh, document here a dot docx so the icon for that is is a microsoft uh, um, windows icon um, now as well as getting applications up from the from the menu at the bottom left um, you can get get to various applications through the files um, and 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 so on so if i double click on this document as an example click there we go um, that brings up the LibreOffice. LibreOffice is the um, open source version of Windows Office. Um, I think it has a slightly more um, primitive uh, menu uh, layout. Um, I think uh, 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 later versions of Windows Office look a bit more sophisticated than this, but everything that you can do on Office, you can do here. Um, so I, I, I don't think I need to go through any of these things, but if later on, if there's anything special that anybody wanted to look at. Um, but just one thing I will show you, and that is that um, you can, uh, when you do a save as for the format of the file, um, you'll see that um, it comes up. I, mind you, I think, uh, I think Microsoft Office does this now as well. If we come down here on the bottom right hand side and look at all the options, you'll see that as well as the Windows format, docx, there's, uh, uh, oh no, sorry, it's at the top where it should be, of course, <laughs> there's um, ODF, so that the um, LibreOffice has an open document format, and you can save your documents in that. Um, so if I click that, um, and then uh, save at the bottom right hand side there, click on that, it will save the document as an ODF. So um, that is uh, fairly okay, I think. So uh, the uh, LibreOffice um, will read in all of the formats, uh, all, the, all, all the formats from Microsoft Office. So if you've got, uh, it's got a spreadsheet, it's got a database, it's, um, we've already seen that it's got a, a PowerPoint equivalent. So if you've got any files that have got the, the extensions that, um, uh, Microsoft use, no worries, uh, LibreOffice will open it. And similarly, nowadays, I think my, the, the later versions of uh, Office will open the, the open format files from uh, formats from uh, LibreOffice. The only thing I've ever had trouble with is um, complicated uh, tables and things in, in, a, in a doc, in a doc docx or something. They don't always render very well uh, if I um, read in a, um, that in, into a LibreOffice, but um, that's quite complicated. The other thing, um, if we've got a, a file here, in, so you can double click to get up the default application, but the other thing you can do is right click. So for example, I've got an image here. If I press the right mouse button, it brings up um, a menu. I, again, I think this is familiar. And you can either, it tells you what the default um, application is, Gwenview, or you can open with and you can choose other applications. And if you click on other applications, then um, it, it gives you some suggestions. And if you can't see what you want, but you, you, you think it might be around, then at the bottom, you can do a search for the application. And the other thing you can do in this um, window is um, you can set the, uh, the system defaults. So if I, um, if I chose uh, to open it with um, Image Viewer instead of Gwen View, then I can, I can select it here, and then I can click here with the left hand mouse button on reset to, to um, sorry, set as default, this middle button here. And then that would automatically, um, uh, if I clicked on an image, it would automatically bring up image viewer instead of Gwen view. So it's quite useful to see. Um, now, um, we were looking, I got a bit sidetracked. Um, we were looking at the uh, file manager. Um, 
the uh, Nemo. So I just go through some of the other options here. It's got a, it's got a powerful search engine, so you can search for files for, on file names or dates or, or content um, in in the in the direct in the hierarchy that you're at. This button here. Uh, that changes the way this is formatted, which tells you which folder you're in. Uh, personally, I prefer having a full path name. Um, and this is, um, this is the full path name on the system. So if I go up the hierarchy and up one more and I get to slash, this is the root of, of the whole Linux system. Uh, the root of all evil, you might like to say, it's really the root of all good. Um, and amongst the folders here, for example, bin, which stands for short for binary. Um, if you go in there, you'll find lots of, of applications are stored in there, libraries, um, a temporary folder, um, and somewhere here is uh, home. There we go, at the top right here. So home contains the folders for each of the users on the system. And I've got uh, three users on the system here. Um, so um, that's cool. OK, I'll come back here. But while we're looking at file structures and so on, I just wanted to show you further down under devices, you've got Windows. Now, um, as I mentioned earlier, what happens is if you've got a hard disk or um, uh, in, in the system, it can be partitioned into virtual disks. And each of those virtual disks looks to the software as though it's a completely separate external disk. And that's why it appears to be a device. Um, if I plug in um, a USB um, stick, that will show up in devices in a minute. There it goes. There, under devices, and it, it brings up uh, the folders on there as well. Uh, it brings up the, the um, USB stick. So let, let's just have a quick look in, in Windows. Some of you will be familiar with the, uh, with the file structure in Windows, but in particular, if you go into Windows itself, I think. Um, oh, okay. OK, I've not seen that before, but I think maybe I'm wrong, actually. Maybe it's users I need to go to here. Um, yeah, so uh, so if you if you go into the users folder, then um, these are users that I had registered with um, uh, Windows when I was running it on this laptop. So that's me again. And yeah, these are a couple of other users so I can get to my files. Um, and copy them over into um, uh, in, in, into my Linux file system if I want. Um, you can have, as you can see, you can have more than one window displaying um, the, 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 the file stores. So you can easily copy from one window into another in order to move files or, or copy files from one folder into another or from one disk or, or device into another. So we'll close that now. Um, the other thing while we're here is I just want to show you um, the format for display that we hadn't looked at yet was this. Um, and uh, this you can display here all the items or all, all, all the bits of data that exist for a, a, a given um, file or folder. These green ones are all folders or directories. If we scroll down, then we find the files. If you right click at the top here, you can um, ask it to display data that you're interested in, information about the, the items that you're interested in. But one um, particular item I, I just want to talk about, uh, let's move the, these over a bit. Uh, and that is, oops, okay. oops, sorry about that. Okay, and that is permissions. And I think this is um, quite integral to the way uh, Linux works. Um, again, I, I'm afraid I don't know. Uh, I think there must be some, something similar in, in Windows, but I'm not sure exactly what, how it works. So um, this is the permissions for each of the items here. Now, if it starts with a D, that's because it's a folder or a directory. 
If that is a, a dash, then it means it's an ordinary file. And those are the only two kinds of, hmm, pretty much the only the two kinds of uh, items that you will see. And then there are three sets of permissions. And these permissions can have the values uh, read, write, and execute. X stands for execute. Um, if it's an application, then if the X, if there's an X in the appropriate place, then you can uh, you can run that application. You can execute the application. Um, if it's a directory that has an X, it means you can go into that directory and you can write files in there and, and do whatever you need to do. Now there's three groups because uh, Unix has uh, Linux has this concept of users who don't have any privileges and super users or sometimes called root who have uh, privileges to do absolutely anything in the system um, if i was if if i was logged on as root or i I'd, I'd got hold of my root privileges and i go all the way up to slash at this point i could start a terminal and i could say rm that means remove star dot star and that means every file in the system <clears throat> in which case at which point linux would break and i'd have to reinstall the whole system so what i'm trying to say is as root as a root user super user i've got too much power um so uh, li uh linux separates that out so on the whole you're not in danger of using your super user powers even if you're allowed to so let's go back and just uh finish looking at that um so there's three sets here so um the first set is for um the owner of the file so the owner here is my is me i'm logged on as root toby so i'm allowed to um let, let's have a look at a file rather than um, a folder but so uh, for example this dot dmrc um i've got i can read it and i can write it that means i can display the file um, and I can change it, I can make changes to it, write data into it, delete it, and so on. Um, now, I, the, the other concept in Linux is that we work in groups as well, so I can have a group membership. Other members of my group can read the file, but they can't change it. And the, the, the right hand most um, set of permissions are for other users. So if I was logged on as Emma, one of the other users on this system, I could get to this file by using um, this file manager. And I could, in fact, open that file for reading, but I couldn't uh, write into it. And if um, this file further down, the dot, .x authority, you'll see that um, the only permissions that are set are read and write for the owner of the file. So um, uh, it, it, I, I just think that the concept is really important because it's one of the things that makes uh, Linux really secure. And it also, it's important to understand it if you're trying to manage the system. Um, so I won't go on further unless there's any burning questions on this. I will leave this topic for now. Um, okay, so um, probably actually the first thing you want to do when you boot, boot Linux is get onto a network. <laughs> and um, if you look at the bottom right hand set of icons on the screen, you'll see the familiar network icon there. If you left click with that, it will bring it up and it will show you the uh, the local all the wireless uh, networks that it can see locally and the one that it's logged into which is my own one um, a lot of these things you can get to with going down to the left hand side and bring up, bringing up the menu and searching for network or finding the network application but it's much easier if you've got the icons here um, another important icon down here is this one this shield which tells you um, whether there are updates of the software that are available. Uh, you can see that it's got a little yellow dot on it, and that means that there are um, software updates that are available at the moment. So if I get, sorry, single click, if I get that up, um, I get a list of all of the uh, 
uh, bits of software in the system that could be updated that have got new versions. Um, now, the, the nice thing about Linux is it is totally under your control. You'll never um, accidentally get to the situation where you 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 boot up Windows because you you want to join a Zoom call in five minutes and the thing starts to update its software and you have to wait half an hour and then reboot. None of that sort of thing. Um, it's totally under your control. And the other thing is that um, it, it's a much more resilient system. So it very rarely crashes simply because you have updated software so you can go on working. Um, I'm, I'm not going to do it now. It does tend to slow the system down, obviously, because it's very disk bound, but um, that's how you do it. And at any time you can you can get this um, application up. You can it will tell you if your system is up to date and there's nothing to do. Uh, you can select what you want to do and you can click install updates to do that. And I again, I recommend doing that um, as often as you can. If you notice there's stuff that needs doing, it's a good idea to keep the system as up to date as possible, because apart from anything else, there is the security fixes that might be being updated and you, you want to stay on top of those. It has its own inbuilt firewall, as an example. Um, so um, I think that's all I wanted to show you at the bottom here. Good. So let's uh, have a look at um, some of the uh, things that you can do, some of the applications that you might want to use. Uh, and I'll just go through them very quickly. Again, if anybody wants more information uh, about um, an application, just put it in the chat and we'll see if we can do it. If not um, this evening, then uh, then it's some future or in chat in the future. So just as we um, head into this bit, Ruth, just yes. so you know, we're almost halfway through, just a, a quick heads up. Okay, I'll try and speed up a little bit. Fine. We've had a few questions, but not loads. So, um, yeah. Okay. Just, that, just to let you know. That's brilliant. Thank you. Um, so uh, good. So I've uh, I've already shown shown you how to get um, Firefox up. I've shown you Firefox. We don't need to go through there again. Um, another popular um, application, if we go into the internet applications, is uh, Thunderbird. Now I don't know um, whether anybody whether you've used Outlook or Thunderbird. Thunderbird runs on different operating systems, but um, it's a, an email client that allows you to download all of your emails from your server, uh, Gmail or um, Yahoo, wherever you get your email, you can get it all read down on onto locally on, in, into, into Thunderbird. Um, and then you can you can manage it, you can read your emails, answer them and so on. And you're not once you've downloaded your messages, you're not dependent on having uh, a, an Internet connection, as an example. Um, but the other thing you can do is you can have more than one account. So if you've got a Gmail account and a Yahoo account, maybe you've got um, a, an account that you use for a, a volunteer group that you work with and you've got uh, your own personal email and you've got a work account, you can have all of those different sets of emails um downloaded and you can manage them all in one place so thunderbird's brilliant uh, thunderbird and firefox come from the same stable which is um mozilla um, and they're very big in in the open source uh, uh arena um so uh I'll just show you those two now um as, as i said the other way to get to applications is via the file store this machine isn't the fastest, <laughs> uh, partly because I've just got too much stuff on it, I think. Here we go. Um, and I'm just uh, going to use, uh, okay, the icon version of, of the file store. So um, let me see, let me show you some, uh, a couple of graphics uh, things as well. So now if I, um, uh, I'll, I'll double click on this image and it will bring up Gwen view. Now there are, um, I suppose this is both a pro and con, but there are probably, you know, half a dozen different applications that will manage uh, images that will do anything that we're talking about today. Um, this is the one that I'm used to, which is why I'm showing it to you. It, um, it allows you to do um, simple manipulations of images. You can rotate it. Uh, the important thing from my point of view is that you can, um, you can, uh, uh, you can um, 
crop the image and that's mainly what I do when I take photos I, I try and crop them before I, I give them to my loved ones so that they're a bit more interesting to look at um, and that's pretty much the only um, th uh, ways that you can manipulate it will it will allow you to do slideshows and and so on and it will also allow you to come out um, uh, 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 to, to, to put the image into another application if, if you want to do that um, but I'll close that. I'll come back in here and right click this time. I've, I've used my right mouse button and I'm going to have a look at open with. Um, and I just wanted to show you another quite powerful uh, application, which is used instead of. Um, ah, what's graphics manipulation? Um, help. I can't remember the one in. Sure. Sorry. Photoshop? Is that Photoshop, right? yeah, thank you, yes. <laughs> so let's go for that. And um, I've no idea how it compares in terms of its um, commands and so on. Um, it is rather a large bit of software, which is why it's taking a while to load. It stands for GNU Image Manipulation Programme. Um, GNU is, is a, again, a set of open source uh, communities. Um, here's the image. Um, you can add text. Uh, oh. Yeah, there it is, bad color for green. Um, you can paint on it. You can choose your paintbrush. You can paint stars on it. Uh, again, I think I need to set the colors. Um, you can see there's there's a whole complicated set of um, of tools. Uh, you can have layers, you can have colors, you can uh, have, you know read in different images and so on. Um, when you finish manipulating your image, you can um, if you want to uh, share your image with other people, you probably want to um, save as um, am I right about that? Uh, yeah, you want to, no, I think I will cancel that. I think that's the wrong command. Let me go back in there. It's export as, I apologize. Yeah, export, export as. Export as. Yeah. And if you use, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and then you can uh, export as a PNG or a JPEG. If you save it, then it saves it as um, GIMP's internal file store, and it's much quicker for it to, um, uh, to re read it in. Also, it, it will lose a lot of information in the JPEG. So, um, if I'm doing this, I'll save save it and, and say and export it as a JPEG. Um, and just as I don't know if I showed you that on the LibreOffice, you can export to a PDF as well. Go away. That's all right. Uh, discard changes. Good. So, um, have I got a PDF here? Um, no, okay, so I'm going to have to go into here. The um, document viewer or ocular is the um, Libra, is the open source version of um, uh, 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 sorry, brain, um, Adobe Acrobat. So, oh, I tell a lie, that's okay. Ah. There's too many options, too many options. Um, do it that way. There we go. Here we go. So um, this allows you to read in, um, hopefully I've got a recent one. Yeah, there we go. Um, you can read in PDF documents. This is one I, I made, I was just messing about yesterday. You can do the usual things. You can, um, the, the, it's, um, it will give you the, the, the things that you can do with the free version of, of Adobe. Um, I, it, you can't edit um, PDF files through, uh, through this, but um, uh, you, can air, uh, you can select areas and so on. Um, there is um, also um, a, uh, um, 
sorry, I was just seeing if I had a far no. Um, there is um, a desktop publishing um, application as well called Scribus. <clears throat> and I've been able to kind of extract stuff from a PDF and, and put it back together again with Scribus. So it, it's quite, uh, that's quite a good one to know. Um, I think um, probably an important um, thing to talk about is uh, backups. So if we come back into the um, application, into the for the uh, application store, application manager, and I ask for backups, and you'll see here that there's a backup tool. If I click on that, it will um, come up and lead you through. Um, lead you through what you need to do to do a backup of your data and you can either back up your your own files or you or you can add in some of the system files or if you've uh, downloaded a, a new piece of software for example you might might want to add in so there's a lot of flexibility there um, if, if you don't already do it, I do recommend backing up your data onto an external um, file store, a USB or um, an, an external disk that's plugged in and do it regularly. Um, the, the, uh, the format that it, do, uh, that it backs stuff up in is a tar GZ. Uh, so that's like um, uh, zip in, in Windows. So it's... Um, it's the single file that if you look inside, you can see that it's got other files in there and um, the, the zipness um, is, um, uh, no, sorry, I, my brain is going a bit at the moment, I do apologise. Um, the word I want isn't there. Um, so um, so it's, it's good to know how to do that, yeah. Um, good, so... Oh, finally, just one other application I would like to show you, and um, that is uh, VLC. Um, again, it runs on other systems, so you may be uh, uh, familiar with it already. Um, but uh, going to music, um, it it's, it's maybe a bit loud if I uh, if I do start it up, but. Um, uh, you can see that I can open it with VLC. If I do that, it will start playing straight away. Um, when I was go. just a little lot of... There we go. <laughs> I do like sea shanties. <laughs> so um, VLC, um, it's a really good application. Uh, it manages music. You can, um, you can play uh, sets of music and albums and so on. But the other big thing that it does is... Um, uh, Okay. Oh, sorry, it's because I've come into uh, bring it up again. There we go. This is the VLC window. Uh, you'll see the other thing that it allows you to do is manage videos and you can play videos, but you can edit videos as well. So, um, and you can edit your audio. So you can do quite a lot of, of media stuff using VLC. Um, very popular good so i think um i'm just going to say a quick word about um finding other applications if you want to um uh, find find new applications um it is the software manager here we go I bring this up. This is a, a bit like um, the App Store on, on Android, as an example. Um, it will show you, um, let's, there we go. It will show you some of the applications that are available. Some of them are already on here, like uh, GIMP, GIMP, um, or Audacity. So there's lots of things there. Dropbox, as an example. If you're looking for something in particular, you can do a search for it here, and it will um, bring up. Um, so um, I don't know if I wanted a word processor. It'd be interesting. It should bring up. Um, yeah. Okay. All sorts of things here. So um, you can find other applications, and you can install them. Um, so it's just to show you that you can do that really. Um, so yes, okay. 
Um, oh yeah, there is one other application that I do want to tell you about. And that is, um, so I should have showed you on, on the, um, the software manager again. This application doesn't come with um, Linux automatically. You have to you have to install it. It's called Wine, um, and it it's a Windows interface. So if you find that you've got programs um, applications that you can't find uh, an open source version that will run on Linux, then um, you can you you can run them under Wine. Um, so if I type wine up here, it will come up with, um, there it is. No, it's ticked because I've already downloaded, I've already got it installed on this system, but that's a, a really useful thing to, um, uh, to know, to, to know about. You can download it, get it running. And then, um, if you've got, uh, .exe files, um, as I have here, I've got, uh, um, signal here we go this this is a version of signal um that it's a, an exe um that i took from from the windows um folder actually and i can run it here so I, and it runs under wine so uh those are all the applications that uh i wanted to tell you about um i, I want to just say a little word about security just to um uh, I, I mean i think this is this is a plus side of of uh, linux really but it has built-in security in a way that other operating systems don't necessarily i've talked a bit about super users and uh, and root and and um uh admin, let me just show you the the uh the user manager as well so if we run up the okay now in order to manage users i do have to be um, a super user i have to use i have to be a privileged user or an administrator so um, it's just asking me to type in my password again in order to confirm that i am me um, and here we are now we've got the users so these are the three users who are um, registered on the system uh, Emma is uh, just a standard user she has absolutely no privileges so if she was trying to do this she wouldn't be able to uh, I've got two other users that Ruth and Ruth Toby Ruth Toby is when I'm logged in at the moment and they both have administrator powers so um, I think it, it's uh, you have to have at least one user who is an administrator, otherwise you, you won't be able to update the, the system and you'll have to reinstall basically. Um, I think it's probably not a bad idea to have two users uh, with administrator powers and then if something goes horribly wrong with one of them, then you should be able to log in uh, as the other one and, um, and sort things out. Um, so uh, this is a level of security that other operating systems don't do this separation of powers and i think it's quite it's important it's important to know how to manage it um the other way in which it's it's more um secure is it has a built-in firewall although i think windows does nowadays as well um and the kernel doesn't have any open ports so um it, it's it's impossible for um external um systems to come in um, and put viruses on 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 the machine and so on you still have to be very cautious when you're opening um emails and so on but because linux is used less frequently um the hackers tend not to um target it and the other thing that makes it really difficult for hackers is the fact that there are so many different versions of linux they would have to have uh, different versions of their viruses in order to get in but also there are um the way the kernel is written it is also um quite robust against uh, viruses being uh, able to be installed um so um you know I, I think you can have some confidence a great site is um which uh, i will give you the link to it later on um but there's a, a website called linuxsecurity.com and that has got tons of information 
um, the I, I mentioned that there is a firewall. Um, you do have to um, uh, configure it and actually get it going. And uh, LinuxSecurity.com will tell you how to do that, how to find it, and how to get it going. Um, it's just one of the applications in here. You just type firewall. Um, so I highly recommend that website. It's absolutely brilliant. And that really is all I want to say. The only, the only other place to go now, the other place I'd like to go if there's time, but I don't know if we have, um, I don't know what you think, James, but um, the only other thing to talk about is the uh, command line interface. Um, can I, I have think... a couple of minutes to show it? Or, or yeah, would you I think we have a couple of what we've got so far. Yeah, I think it's okay to touch on it. Um, okay. If we keep it to five minutes or so, then we'll have lots of time for questions after that. Okay, cool. Lovely. So down here, I've, I've um, you can get it through the menus, but it's called terminal or console. It's down here on the left. Um, and uh, I mean, people who know it, love it. You, you get complete affectionados and there'll be forums and groups and so on that, that will talk about it endlessly. But it is very, very powerful. Um, so um, I don't know, just uh, as a small example, here's, um, uh, uh, here's a list of, of my files. Uh, here's a list of uh, files with all the details that we saw earlier. And that's, a, that's quite difficult, but I might want to um, find and see whether I've got a, a folder called documents as an example. So I can, uh, one of the powers is that you can run a program uh, and then you can pipe, it's called piping. You use this, uh, this character here which you'll find uh, on, on the keyboard. Um, and that sends the output from one command into the input of another command. And a favorite command of, uh, of uh, Linux Fectionados is grep, which is uh, that just um, looks inside a file and for a string and tells you whether it's there. So if I grep um, document, sorry, document and press enter, you'll see that it's run the LS, it's piped it, it's piped it through grep, and indeed I did have a, 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 doc, a folder called document, and it's documents, but it still brings it up because it um, it does the matching. So there's all sorts of wonderful things like that you can do, um, and there's all sorts of programs you can run. Um, one of the things I was playing with was um, a, a Python. Um, uh, a Python uh, interpreter. By the way, when, when you're in the um, uh, when you're in the terminal, when you're in the command line interface, there's this notion of of sitting inside the folder. So rather than looking at folders, you, you are in a folder. So um, you can see uh, when I ask which folder I'm in, I'm in Ruth Toby. So now I can go into um, the um, uh, folder and if I do um, a regular expression on it that gets me into the demos one and here we've got some files that I prepared earlier and there it is so now um, hello world you can see hello world at the bottom here that is a python program that I did for an earlier workshop so I can run python the program is actually called python 3 here and again, I can do all of the file names in the commands use regular expressions. So I can just do that since it's the only one there. And there it goes. It's running it. It says, hello, world. And hello, Rosie, the restarters, because that was the workshop that I designed it for, that I wrote it for. It's asking me my name. And I type in my name, Toby. And it says, hi, Toby. Hope you're enjoying the workshop. So um, it's just the sort of thing you can play around with if you'd like to. I won't. Um, show you anything else unless anybody would like me to in particular here yeah. there's a lot of very powerful stuff you can do here um, including um, using things like git and for software development and indeed um, taking part in in the open source communities developing software if any of you are software engineers i highly recommend that you have a go at, uh, at actually taking part in some of that okay that's all i wanted to say I think um, there's loads of help out there. Um, I, I think we're going to um, put some links to a, a couple of websites in the chat. There is a, a Linux forum, a Linux Mint forum, all the, all the different Linuxes 
um, have got their own forums that you, and you can log on and you can uh, chat to people in that. The, the best thing I find is if if I'm trying to find something that something's not working or uh, I'm trying to find something how to do it, then um, I'll go into Firefox and I'll do a search. Um, and as long as uh, it's important to remember to put in the terms Linux and Mint, and then you'll get Linux Mint specific help as well. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll give you the uh, we'll, we'll give you a couple of links, but uh, go out and explore and have fun. Okay, do we have time for questions? Brilliant. Thanks so much, Ruth, for giving us that whistle stop tour through <laughs> Linux Mint. That was really really helpful, really informative. Um, we do have some questions that have accumulated throughout your demonstration. Okay. Um, so uh, we'll start working through those, if that's okay. I don't promise to be able to answer them. But <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how we go. I, I spot that there are some fellow Linux kind of uh, users in the in the session who I'm sure can chip in in case we run into trouble. But oh, uh, let's, yes. start, <laughs> let's start with the first <laughs> question, which is from Carol, who unfortunately had to, uh, had to leave early. Uh, but she asked, do you need to download the software manager? Or is that kind of built into the system? Oh, no, that's built in. Yes. Yeah. So um, everything that we've looked at today came, I think, everything came with um, the, the uh, distribution. So it was all when I downloaded uh, uh, Mint and um, onto the um, USB and, and uh, put it on the system, everything was there. The only exception um, was Wine. I had to download that. I, I, I mean, this is from memory. I think even VLC was there. Um, but definitely the software manager is there, yeah. Perfect. Uh, could you also uh, stop sharing your screen so we can see you a bit better? Be okay. okay. Or <laughs> can always might... come back in if we need yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. If we need to demonstrate something, we can, uh, yeah. we can uh, do that. Perfect. Uh, um, oh, I have to do that, don't I? So... Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Excellent. Cool. Uh, perfect. The next question is from Mario. Uh, Mario asked, um, does Linux Mint automatically encrypt pictures or files? Would it be possible to open drives uh, that, had, that previously had uh, Mint without booting up the actual machine, for example? That felt like a couple of questions in, in one go. So um, Mario, do it doesn't... Unmute oh, sorry, clarify. Mario, hi. Yeah. Um, hello, hi. hi. Uh, you know, I was just uh, uh, wondering if uh, when we install Linux, you know, when we have to uh, log in with a, a user and password, uh, does it does it encrypt automatically the the hard drive? So does it, um, yeah, just, uh, is it the encryption automatically or is something no, that we... It, it doesn't encrypt the, the hard drive automatically. One can encrypt, but um, it, it doesn't happen automatically. No. Fantastic. Um, I mean, one of the problems with it, of course, if you have got encrypted files is it takes longer to use them, so yeah so yeah. yeah in the case we had with windows uh a drive you had in, installed and you opened that and you, we could search file through the linux paint in the windows uh if um if it's not encrypted we we could of course doing the doing the same uh process right yeah okay yeah. That, yeah. that's that was the only questions yeah Okay, yeah, and if so, if you had a file store on a, a Linux file store that you'd copied onto a USB stick or something, you'd be able to open it within Linux, yeah, or in fact, a Windows file store. There are, yeah, it, it, it's um, it's very forgiving that way that they just wouldn't be encrypted, yeah, for sure. And um, James, if you allow me, I'll, I'll do just an extra question. Uh, it's not written in the comment there. Um, are the other flavors of Linux Mint uh, limited of, uh, or are all? The same, like the cinnamon one, I think is the main one, is it? Uh, uh, I've, I've used Mint here because it's uh, it's a lightweight one. It's a smaller one and it's very good for old laptops, which this is. And um, you know, it's also one of the reasons that restarters are interested. That's mm -hmm. why I'm using it. But yeah. there are other uh, other distros that are much fuller and have more, you know, greater facilities and so on. I actually use something called Open so Open Suze on my desktop, which is where I do my work, my development. Perfect. Uh, yeah, the, the Mint specifically, uh, Linux Mint, as I think has three or four flavors. Like um, the Mint itself. But of course, Linux has so many uh, 
uh, but I think oh, they oh yeah, they, mint, yes, mint yeah, itself has has flavors as but well. But right. yeah. I think they they're gonna work. I think they're lighter than the main, which is uh, cinnamon again. But then uh, I, was, I was just curious if there was any difference between them. Uh, yeah, I, I can't answer that really. I don't know, but <laughs> um, no problem, and they're, no and they're always bringing out. I notice there's a new new one that's come out now as well. So, um, but that's the kind of the Linux forum would be the perfect place to go in and uh, and ask people about that as well. Yeah, the Mint forum particularly. Fantastic. Thank you. Brilliant. No, thank you. <laughs> Uh, and just to uh, clarify as well, so Stuart in the chat um, did Thanks mention you. that yeah. it's possible to use full disk encryption um, or just encrypt your home directory on Linux as well. That's true, actually. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And um, as Neil has just put in the chat, I think that it's also there are different user interfaces that you can use as well. Even uh, Mint comes with two. Um, uh, and uh, so I'm, I'm using the, the cinnamon one here, but there is another one that I could have used. I won't log out or I'll use my lose my connection. But <laughs> it's KDE is is a is quite a popular one. And that's the other one that comes uh, with this version of Mint anyway. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, the next question comes from Mark, who asks earlier, uh, he's tried a Mint installation, and it seems to suggest time shift for backup. Is that useful? Um, and Stuart added that doing a backup is a kind of a session in and of itself, um, but suggested that the application just creates a copy of your files and you have to work out where to store those copies. Uh, I don't know if yes. it's something you've come across or not, but... I think time shift is an application that does backups. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You definitely have to decide even with the, the, the backup um, applications that I showed you there, you have to decide where you're going to store the files. Um, and, and I recommend on, on an external device really, because if, you know, if something goes wrong with, with the, uh, the device that you're backing up, then you lose your backup as well. If you've just put it on a different area of the disk. Um, I'm not mistaken. Uh, but the rule is three, two, one, right? So have three copies, with two yeah. different formats, and at least one on offsite. Is that correct? Yeah. If if you're being yes, if you've got really precious stuff, definitely one offsite. And um, yeah, I've got yes, I have three or four discs, but I yeah, I rotate them. So at any one time, I've got the last three backups, and that's a really uh, a good idea. Yeah. Brilliant. It depends how yeah <laughs> how precious your data is. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Mike. Uh, Mike asked, um, for an oldish PC, is Mint better than Lubuntu? Um, I, probably at the outset, I would say yes, but um, because you can dual boot these things, you could try both of them and see which you prefer. But Mint is based on Ubuntu anyway, but it is particularly tailored for, um, for older hardware. So depending on how old your, your um, desktop is, then yes, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, how old is my desktop? It must be about 10 years old now and I'm running SUSE Linux on it, but it's a, a heftier machine as well. It depends how much capacity you've got. Um, so I, I think Linux doesn't, doesn't really mind about the age. It's much more about the speed and the, the, large, the disk capacity and that sort of thing, but um, the lighter versions do better on smaller systems. Makes sense. Um, and I think Mike was asking about Lubuntu with an L, but I don't know if that's just a typo or a different flavor that I don't know. Um, Sorry, what, what was that? Lubuntu. Yeah, Lubuntu is a very, is a very lightweight ah, uh, Linux. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's based, it's a, it's a Ubuntu flavor, so it is um, sim, you know, similar to, uses a lot of the features of Ubuntu, but it's a very lightweight desktop. Okay, so that's L, L for light, U, B, U, N. Okay, so that's a direct Ubuntu distro that's, uh, that's very... Is it better than Mint, would you say? Well, on, is it more tolerant? Older and, you know, even older machines, even you older, know, sort yeah. of um, uh, 386 and, you know, 32-bit oh, yes. machines. Remember them? I do, uh, yes. So, so <laughs> that, that's yeah. probably where you go, um, whereas uh, I don't think Ubuntu and Mint support 32-bit machines anymore probably not no that's so, really um, no. with really limited hardware like thanks like stuff with um like my sister had a um a laptop a samsung one it had an intel Celeron, and we all know they're rubbish 
but it was a Celeron from like 2011, two gigs of RAM. It couldn't even run Windows 7, but I put Lubuntu on it and that worked for another six months. Then the motherboard died. I could have fixed it, but it was kind of pointless. It's just, I mean, I've got, I've got 90 odd laptops in my possession and each of them were about 14 pounds a piece or something. They're all considerably newer and better. So mm. it, even though we are restarters and repairers, at some point we just have to get <laughs> stuff in the bin, don't we? Although, yeah, that's all I've got. <laughs> that's really useful to know. I don't know whether Philip's um, wiki mentions Lubuntu, but if it doesn't, mm. we should add it in there, I think. So um, thank you very much for that. Yeah, um, it's uh, it, it is also handy as well, just for um, if you've got like a really really old printer from like two thousand and two or three or something that hasn't got Windows drivers, if you just want a machine to run the printer and get some really tired old otherwise worthless desktop, and you can just chuck that in the corner and then when you need to use the printer, you know if you're not printing all that often, turn it on and there you go. Instead of having um, some really, really old, outdated, vulnerable driver on your Windows 10 machine or whatever. That's, yeah, that's a, that's a good idea as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And I, you can, yeah. You can actually get rid of me now. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> actually, Karen, yeah, no. The, the, the question is the next one in the chat. Uh, I think you're asking, Ruth, what, what ThinkPad uh, you're using. Oh, yeah, Han, because I've got a, oh, oh. I've got a decade old T430 here. Okay. Indestructible okay. they are. <laughs> and so I, I was just remember. curious if it was like a T410 uh, <laughs> or something. I can't remember what this one is actually. Oh. That's a, don't say oh, a T440. Uh, I'll start T480? T480? That's, no, that's e. Even, e for every. E480. That's not even remotely old. That's like, well, it's maybe four or five years. No, but. no it's my desktop that's that's older. Oh, which right. is, yeah, which yeah, but but the laptop was uh, yeah is younger yeah. Mm. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Callum. Um, no <laughs> then uh, one more question was from Neil Wade. Uh, have more than one Neil in the in the session tonight. Uh, who asked, um, does LibreOffice run VBA macros? Does anyone know? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, it will it will run uh, macros and things like that in um, um, certainly in the spreadsheet. All of the um, uh, Microsoft functions are supported, but you can also run uh, Python. Uh, uh, you can write Python scripts to run in the in the um, Calc in the LibreOffice Calc application as well. But yes. Uh, there may be really complicated app, um, uh, scripts and uh, VBA scripts and things like that that it may struggle with or whatever. But you, they've done a lot of work in making sure that scripts work. Um, based on experience, what usually breaks is Windows dependencies, like it's using file names from Windows or stuff like that. Yeah. You know, like if you have a spreadsheet which loads data out of a CSV file and it's using C column backslash blah blah, that's just not going to work. Right? Yeah, that's the usual practical problem. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks, Dave. Um, I think Neil's also put some info, uh, a link to some more info in the chat for anyone who's curious. Um, Thanks. So that link should provide a bit more information as well. Brilliant. Um, okay, I think we've had a couple of questions recently from uh, Elias. Um, the first one, Elias, you asked, is Linux setup available on the web? Um, I'm not sure I quite understand the question. So the idea of Linux is it replaces Mac OS or Windows. Um, so you would install it on your computer. Um, but are you asking if there's help available online? Um, can you clarify your question for us? Uh, maybe in the chat if you want to write. Um, I know English can be complicated. Hello? 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 Oh, wait. Hello. How are you? Good evening, James. Good evening. Hi. Hi. I'm fine. And you, Ruth, thanks for your presentation. Pleasure. Okay, I just want to know if uh, I can get a uh, Linux setup uh, 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 online. 
Yes, no, um, no as, as uh, James explained, so it's, it's an operating system. It's de designed to, um, an operating system is the software that enables you to use your hardware. So um, it, it enables the, it connects to the mouse. It enables you to use your mouse. It organizes the file stores. Um, it, it connects with a keyboard, allows you to type in. It, it manages devices like USBs and so on. So um, it, it, it isn't a piece of software that would run in, actually, I'm, as I'm saying this, of course, there are virtual machines that do run in the cloud, and you could set up a virtual machine that had Linux running on it. In fact, that's quite common uh, to have virtual servers. Um, so yes, definitely you can do that, but, but a virtual machine is what it says, I suppose. But So you need a machine of some kind, be it physical or virtual, and then you can run Linux. And then that Linux software will enable you to use that machine to do whatever it is you want to do. Does that make sense, Elias? Okay, Ruth, I get. So if someone here can help me to have a, a setup and uh, install it on my, my computer, it will be very nice. Yes. Yes, indeed. I, I'm sure um, you, hopefully you'll be able to find some local help. Yes, definitely. Elias, if you post um, a topic on the forum uh, saying that you want to install Linux, mm. uh, I'm sure a lot of the people in the chat uh, in the session tonight will be able to help you via the forum to set up Linux. Okay, uh, no, no problem. Cool. We also have uh, an article on the wiki um, about setting up Linux right. as well. I've just put a link in the chat, so that's a good place to start. Okay, um, thank, but, thank, but, thank yeah, you. Ask for help for sure. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay, uh, I think we're officially out of questions. Um, <laughs> amazing, right? We got through all of them. Does anyone else have any other aspects of Linux that they'd like to talk about tonight? Any other questions about how it works or uh, questions about distros or anything else that- Yeah, um, anything to add to, to what I said or corrections if, if, uh, if needed or anything? One thing I would suggest is a certain amount of caution with the idea that open source means everything gets fixed. Uh, <laughs> there are people who've been waiting 10 years for bugs to get fixed in open office. That's one of the reasons a LibreOffice exists. Is because yeah. there was, yeah. So it's nice to think that, yes, you just put a call out and a bug gets fixed. And in some cases it does. But in other cases, nobody cares to fix it and it just gets left. Well, this so is I true. Yeah. And how, how long does it take to get something fixed in Microsoft Office? Um, well, in one day, it's three weeks. Oh, yeah, OK. It yeah, it depends on how much money and influence you've got. Ah. <laughs> um, I, if you work for a large investment bank and you complain to Microsoft based on experience, you get things fixed. Right, OK. Yeah. But similarly, actually, I mean, there is a, there are quite a few open source sort of bounty systems now where you can pay to get things fixed yeah 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 yeah. which is you know one thing to think about is you've got a really serious need you know yeah. it's just pay somebody to fix it you know it's software but the nice thing is if you pay to get it fixed everybody benefits exactly yeah and not only that i mean it is just software but it's available software um, yeah. whereas proprietary software isn't available your only way to get things done is to go through the the uh, the company that runs it but um, yeah, anybody, yeah. Any, any, anybody can have a go at fixing the open source software. And um, if the, uh, the, the people who manage the software like what you've done, then they'll incorporate it and then and they'll um, distribute it out to everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. But if it works for you and you like it, then you can run your own version of the software. Indeed, yeah. And it's, it's, it's quite a powerful, yeah, thing to do, I think. So, um, yeah. Yes, so if you know anybody who codes or you code yourself, then get in there and try it out, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Um, so we've got about five minutes to go. So I think um, it might, unless there are any kind of last minute burning questions, uh, it might be time to wrap up. Uh, any last minute, some questions that you wanna get in? Um, if not, 
then uh, I'd just like to just extend again uh, a huge thanks to Ruth for talking us through Linux Mint this evening um, and sharing her knowledge and expertise, uh, as well as to everyone else in the session tonight. Um, so yeah, Stuart, Callow, and Mario, uh, others who've shared their experiences uh, and Dave, of course, with, with Linux. Thank you all so much for coming uh, and for asking questions uh, and sharing your knowledge. Um, I hope it's been a really interesting session. Um, and if you have any other questions about Linux after the session, feel free to go to the Restarters Forum where Ruth, I'm sure, uh, and other people in the chat will be more than happy to help. So Elias, if you need help, please do post in the forum and we'll be there to, to support. Yep. Um, in the meantime, have a great rest of the evening, everybody, and see you soon. Take care. Thanks for coming. <laughs>